watching the NIT on ESPN and tonight from Salt Lake City and the University of Utah. It's the number two seed running Utes against the visiting VCU Rams and NIT quarterfinal. Utah 16 and two at the Huntsman Center. VCU won two tough road games to get here. The winner tonight will play in the semifinals Tuesday against the number one seed Indiana State. Seton Hall and Georgia will play in the other semi. Hi, everybody. Dave Feldman along with former Arizona standout Corey Williams. All right, Corey, it's very simple. Win and you get to keep playing and play at historical Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. It's a great time of year for players. It's just you and your guys survive in advance. No games are guaranteed. Nothing left on your schedule. You got to bring it every night. Utah's got a lot of stars. They got Brandon Carlson. They got Gabe Madsen. But Davon Smith has been Mr. Consistent and Mr. Triple Double. He is the key to this Utah youth offense. When you talk about his efficiency, his productivity, what he means to them, he creates so much with his athleticism. He's all over the court, both ends of the floor. You're talking about a team that shoots the ball well. He's a big reason why. He breaks down the defense. He creates opportunities for his teammates. But then he can call his own number in the one-on-one -on -one and make plays happen. He is electrifying, making the plays that get the crowd into the game and making making this game so much easier for his teammates. He is simply sensational. Four triple doubles this season. Wow. And 11 double doubles. Now, VCU plays terrific defense. They defend well against the three. And one of their best defenders who's going to have to guard Davon Smith is Zeb Jackson. He is the tip of the spear defensively for VCU. They're a very athletic team with wingspan, but they shut you down. They take away your perimeter shooting, but it all starts out front with him. He's going to have to have a big game. This is the first meeting ever between these two teams. VCU will go about 10 deep. Ryan Odom plays a lot of guys. Utah will go about seven to eight. They've got the height. VCU's got the length. It should be a very interesting matchup. The Utes so good in this building. Corey, 16 and two at the Huntsman Center. This game will come down to which team poses their will, imposes their will on the other, quite simply. Craig Smith, 21 wins, most in his three years in Salt Lake City. And the last time the Utes were in the NIT six years ago, they made it all the way to the championship game. Ryan Odom's in his first year at VCU after two years at Utah State where he followed Craig Smith. The Rams lost in the A-10 title game to Duquesne. Utah will be in the home white. VCU in the dark. And it'll be Christian Furman jumping up against Lawson Lovering, a seven-footer against a six-tenner. And we're underway in the NIT quarterfinal, and the Utes will have the first possession. The aforementioned Davon Smith with the four triple-doubles. They go right to Brandon Carlson. And a, almost a turnover. The Utes will keep it. Dave, you can see early what the strategy is. Brandon Carlson touches the ball. He's going to see a double team. But he's a great big man when it comes to passing and finding his teammates. He had a double-double in their first round game against UC Irvine, which included five blocks. Now Smith gets the high screen from Carlson. Instead goes to Madsen, who had seven threes in their last game. But this is Carlson, and Brandon puts the Utes on the board. And that's what makes him a problem offensively. You have to double him on the block, but when he's out there beyond the arc, very few big men can defend him out there. Now Kwani Kwani. This is Bearstone. Bears down. Kicks it back out. Zeb Jackson with five on the shot clock. Jackson's three on the way. Off the mark and out of bounds. Out of bounds. Utah basketball. Craig Smith's gone with the same starting five this whole postseason. And keep in mind that. Lawson Lovering's another seven-footer, so they start two of them with Lawson and Carlson. That's Cole Bajima inside. Let's everyone fly by, but misses the easy shot. Bear stow to Kwani Kwani, the former California Golden Bear, relocating now in Richmond, Virginia. Bear 
Ayersto, height advantage over Madsen, misses it, and Lovering clears. Davon Smith with the runner. They really make you pick your poison. Utah, that high ball screen action. If you trap that, they've got shooters. If you don't, Davon athletic enough to make something happen. Max Shulgas, their leading scorer, number 11. The guard from the Ukraine. Now Kwani Kwani going against the seven-footer. Tries to go over him. And Davon Smith high up for the board. Madsen might have taken a little step. No call. Davon Smith out hustles everybody for the rebound. When most point guards are getting back on D, he's crashing the glass, and it pays off. Gabe Madsen for three. Had seven in the last game versus Iowa. He's one for one off his start and a timeout by VCU. You can talk about the great offensive start for Utah, but the story is three consecutive stops on the defensive end. They've showed up and limit them to just one shot. A good start for the Utah Utes. 8 nothing, where they're very good at home. Good a start as you can have. 8 nothing, a Madsen 3, a Carlson 3, and a runner by Davon Smith. All the usual suspects already in the scorebook. It's about the defense for the Utes. They're doing great one-on-one -on -one containment, contesting shots, plays like that. Furman was swatted from behind by Davon Smith, and Shulga missed an easy one. Smith again. Leaves it for Carlson for the easy dunk. 10 nothing Utah. They don't close out on Davon Smith, and he takes it right to the rim for one of what may be several assists tonight. Jackson and Zeb Jackson puts VCU on the board. He's done that all season. One of those guys who can get a shot whenever he wants, but is more interested in running the team, making sure everybody else eats. Madsen into Carlson. Lovering cuts. The left-hand jump hook gets a nice roll. There you see the high basketball IQ of Brandon Carlson. He expects the double team. He was passing that ball as he was catching it. Jackson inside and Furman misses the one. Had to go over the trees. Carlson for another three. Too strong and Bear still running for VCU. She'll go bump by Davon Smith and Davon Smith picks up his first foul and we'll take a timeout. A great start for the Utah Utes. 16 and 2 at home, already with 21 wins and trying to get back to the championship game. That's where they were the last time they were in the NIT. It was six years ago. So far, they're sharing the rock. 12-2, Utah on top. Twelve to two, so one of these guys is happy, one is not. Owen Odom is the son of Ryan Odom. Brady Smith, the son of Craig Smith. Well, you know Ryan Odom followed Craig Smith at Utah State. And when Smith, Smith moved from Logan to Salt Lake City, his son Brady stayed in Logan for his senior year. He became good friends with Ryan's son, Owen. Brady would sometimes sleep over at the Odoms. They're still good buddies. In fact, last night, Owen Odom slept over at Craig Smith's house. But Craig Smith, Corey, said he told Owen, my office is off limits. That's where I keep the VCU scouting report, and I don't want you going in there. And it would appear so far he didn't get in there because it's a pretty good Utah start, 12-2. Yeah, I mean, he didn't do good uh, recon, as they say, <laughs> in the military, because not the best start for VCU, but they've got to do some things to change the tempo right now. Utah's playing great 
half-court defense, and it's causing them some late shots under pressure. One for seven so far for BCU, so they bring in their instant offense off the bench. Joe Bamasil, he misses, and that hoop is no good by Toby Lawal. Offensive foul on the wall, who you will watch as a human highlight film, Corey. 50-inch vertical leap. And he had one right there. It looked like he was playing on a nerf hoop, the way he just floated in for the tip dunk, but it's not going to count. Folks, keep your eyes on him. He is a sensational athlete. Only been playing basketball five years from London, England. Was a soccer player till he realized he was tall and that he could jump over the moon. Brandon Carlson on the nice dish. Good. Boy, the meal tastes good when they set the table like that. Kayvon Smith penetrates and throws it all the way back out to the seven-footer. 15-2 Utah on top. Shulga pump fake, no good. Carlson clears it. The Rams have not had an open shot yet. Everything contested. Speaking of open shots, Madsen for three off. And the wall with the rebound, and now a foul on Utah. When Brandon Carlson is hitting the three, Corey, that is problem for opponents. Well, this is shooting practice right here. Davon Smith gets downhill. All the black shirts are in the lane, but way too much distance between them and the sharp shooting Brandon Carlson. Fats Billups in, number five. He's a redshirt freshman from Richmond. He can give them some instant offense as well. They've got to get better action and create opportunities. Right now, they're ending up late in the possession, trying to make plays one-on-one. -on -one. Shulga trying to make something happen. Now Bell, the freshman, loses it. Ball's on the floor. Madsen picks it up to Cole Bajima, who thought about it and goes back to Madsen, who will shoot it. And Madsen's around and in for three. Live ball turnover. Three-second possession for the Utes in this building. That's what they do. Madsen has 99 threes, one off the Utah single-season mark. Madsen gets it back. Madsen against Bamasil, too strong. Kaba Kata tried to run it down, and it's off Utah. VCU ball. And for right now, VCU, it's got to be Zeb Jackson to the rescue because the ball security's not there. Live ball turnovers, and this is just too easy for the Utes. Great recognition, Madsen with the knockdown. 99 threes. We're standing on the 100 in the season record mark. That'll be the next one that goes through for 55. <laughs> Bell lost it. Steal by Madsen. Kabakata posting up inside. Pass too far. Here comes VCU. Billups is good. And Fats Billups ends the drought for VCU. And why not? Transition basketball. Probably a little more effective for the Rams right now. Their half-court offense hasn't given them much. This is Hunter Erickson, zero, the BYU transfer in for Utah. Bajima lets the bodies fly, but he's called for steps. Turnover by the Utes. Uh, there's no way Bajima was going to go straight up with that. That would have got rejected. <laughs> so he throws the pump fake, but shuffles the feet. Jackson off the screen now, left wide open. Zeb Jackson for three, and he hits it, and it's 18-8. KYP, know your personnel. You cannot go under ball screens with Zeb Jackson. Cole Badgema with a defensive error, and the Rams make him pay. Zeb's second year in the program, came off the bench last year, started at Michigan. And turnover, and Utah will keep the ball. Ben Carlson and Lawson Lovering. Lawson Lovering comes in, Ben Carlson comes in, and Brandon Carlson and K. Bakeda have a seat. Dave, I kind of like what I'm seeing out of VCU. Very ugly start, but they've kept their composure one possession at a time, and feels like it's more than a 10-point game. It does. I agree. 
Madsen thought about it. They anticipated that. Nice defense, and then the turnover. And then the foul on Madsen. Good D by VCU. Good, better D by Madsen. They had a four on two, and he broke it up with the foul. 18-8, Utah on top, VCU showing some life. Back to the Huntsman Center in a moment. Madsen is Utah's sharpshooter. He had seven threes Sunday when Utah beat Iowa. Seven threes, so it's getting repetitive, Gabe. I'm just, Gabe for three, yeah, Madsen yeah. for three. So I've come up with some nicknames. You just give me your honest feedback. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Sounds good. If you like them or not. Let's do it. The triple threat. I mean, you know, maybe a little old school. Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty good. You don't love it. Rain Man. I'm an excellent shooter. I'm an excellent shooter. I'm an excellent shooter. Like the movie Rain Man. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, got, I haven't seen Rain Man. Oh, my goodness. I right, skipped that one. From Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh, like the store. Yeah. That, you know, it smells good. It, it smells good in there. You don't like that one. You know? You didn't like any of them. <laughs> you didn't like any of them. All right. That's they got match. potential. They got potential. Did you like any of them? Be honest. If you were shooting, you'd be about, my about 25%. You shot your wow. shot, you're like one for four, which is not, I'm not going to close out on you. I'm going to let you shoot. That's your percentage. Have you seen Rain Man? <laughs> of course I have. Okay, well, he hadn't, but he's much younger. Inside and a nice job by Bell, the freshman. 18-10. That's what you want out of a timeout. One of your quick hitter plays, easy bucket for the Rams. They got a player down. Jackson is shaking up. Five on four for the youth. The refs will stop this if they don't have an advantage, and now they do. Zeb Jackson holding his arm. And Dave, this could be significant as he's holding his elbow. He got hit with a pretty solid screen that he Jay, didn't see. Number five, kind of shook him up. So they'll go look at Zeb Jackson, and Shulga comes back in. Also checking into the game, number 21, Christian Perlman. Okay, so now with their point guard leader on the bench, VCU will try to cut into this lead as Bamasil stuck inside, throws it away. VCU recovers. The Rams have to go. Seven on the clock. You're right, Corey. They leave it. Furman switched hands. Lovering tried to block it, got hit in the mouth, and a foul on Lawson Lovering. Foul number 34, Lawson Lovering, his first fourth team foul for the Utes. So here's what happened to Zeb Jackson. I mean, this is basketball 101. You got to communicate. Teammates got to call the screens. Ooh. Perfectly legal screen set by Lovering. And that's like running into a brick wall. Yep. He is a solid seven footer. And, uh, yeah, you guys got to call the screen. Furman hits the first. Barely played last year, but has emerged as a solid five. Got off to a hot start at the beginning of the season. And a lot of potential for the, him as Furman goes one of two. Smith left alone, goes into Lovering. Lovering at Furman, and they call the whistle on Christian Furman, the foul. So Lawson Lovering, who had a good game last game after having foul trouble in week one versus UC Irvine, real good in game two. Hey, a reminder, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins tomorrow. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TBS and CBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. They're cleaning up Lawson Lovering, who on the previous play fouled Furman with his face, and now he just got fouled. He had 6.6 .6 rebounds and 5 assists in that last game, and remember we said... How valuable he was, Corey, against Iowa. He didn't. He played 22 minutes and, and did all the little things. Oh, when Iowa cut it to a five-point game, 
he followed up with a great offensive rebound, the assist, and then he got a tip dunk for and one, got it back to 10 points, and that kind of kept that breathing room. So he's made big plays. Now, the one place Lawson can improve is at the free throw line. He's only a 52% free throw shooter, and he has yet to shoot one tonight. Thought maybe the reverse jinx would work. It didn't. <laughs> Second free throw on the way is good. Lovering makes one of two, and it's 19-11 Utah. Closing in on the 10-minute mark. Bell thought about it. Now Shulga in the corner. Seven on the shot clock. Shoulder tough shot blocked by Smith, who saves it to Carlson. Thought he had a mismatch in the paint, but not with that vertical leap. Now Davon Smith pulls up for three. Off the mark. Joe Bamasil, mid-range jumper. Furman got the offensive rebound, but he was standing on the out-of-bounds line, and Utah will get it back. BCU's had some good looks, Corey. They just haven't dropped. Very good looks. They withstood that early barrage from the Utes, and eight-point game right now, and they'll be the first to tell you they have not played well offensively. They're 4-15 from the field. They have not scored in four minutes, have not made a field goal in four minutes. For BCU to have success tonight, they're going to have to play that suffocating defense that they play down in South Florida where they contest, they rotate. Everyone knows about their wingspan, their ability to guard the perimeter, but tonight it's going to be about guarding the post. There you see the double team. Hunter Erickson left open in the corner. Get some space. Shulga waits for Kwani Kwani, the trailer who dunks it in. Just the second transition bucket for the Rams, but it comes off of a solid defensive stop where they made Carlson give the ball up. BCU on 11 to 1 run and Lovering finishes. Wow. Quite an answer. Now Shulga. Bamasil working against Erickson. Bearstow misses, and here comes Lovering. Another contested shot late into the possession. The backdoor pass for Madsen picked off. Up ahead. The wall clobbered by Brandon Carlson, and he'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. We talked earlier about picking your poison against the Utes. This is just a ball screen, and VCU gives the proper reaction. They give a lot of attention to Davon Smith, but if you're going to be late to the roll on a seven-footer, that's how you end up on SportsCenter. <laughs> Bad things are going to happen when Lawson Lovering gets to take a drop step and put the two-hand jam down. Toby Lawal from London, the sophomore, 6'8", 200 pounds. The 50-inch vertical leap. Only been playing five years, was the soccer player. It's almost like when you lob up to him, Corey, you can't throw it too high, right? You cannot throw it over him. No, he makes bad passes, good passes, just out of pure athleticism. One of the really exciting players, and talking with his coaches today, he's developing his outside shot, and definitely has all the potential to be a player at the next level. 66 free throw shooter, 66%. He's got a good looking stroke. 
And you think about it, man, the start was terrible for VCU, but, Corey, it's a six-point game. It's a six-point game. Their premier player, Zeb Jackson, took a shot to his left shoulder. He's a left-handed player, so we'll see kind of how he reacts as he's back in the game now. But, yeah, just a two-possession game. Badgema, mid-range jumper, and Cole Badgema's on the board. And VCU will live with that. He's a spot-up shooter, but they make him put the ball on the deck, and he converted a bucket right there. Jason Nelson is a sophomore from Richmond, number one, running the offense right now for the Rams. Kwani Kwani. His shot is much improved, but off there, and Lawal fouls Kaba Keda on the rebound. So we'll take a break. VCU on a little bit of a run. It's 23-15, the number two seed Utah on top. in Salt Lake City where the Utes are being led by the big man with the big game Brandon Carlson we talked about inside out he's got the whole toolkit on display here early they've been getting him the ball in great position and he's been converting 62 threes on the season for Brandon Carlson who has two today and we talked about it for if Madsen plays well if Carlson plays well and Davon Smith has a good game uh, which Davon Smith's had two great games in the postseason, and Madsen's had one spectacular, and Carlson's had one spectacular. All three are clicking. That's a real problem for anybody. It is, and when you look at that stat line early on, that's a guy who's not forcing anything, just taking what comes to him, passing out of the double team, but taking his shots when he's open. Bajima hit the mid-range. The long one curls out. Zeb Jackson back in with the bad wing. We'll see how it goes. Lefty guarded by Badgema. Furman, the nice pass from Zeb Jackson, and he floater goes. Well, you see the great pocket pass. Talked about Zeb Jackson running the show. That's a perfect example of it. Kata demanding the ball. Double team now. That's just him and Furman. Kata turns. Got it lost. Got it back. Goes up again. That one won't go. VCU comes down with it. And Davon Smith picked Jackson's pocket. No one gave him a heads up. Kwani Kwani was trying to yell to him, but he couldn't hear in this crowd. Smith gets it back. Blocked by Furman. Bearstow comes down with it. Bearstow to Nelson. Kwani Kwani's trailing. Couple of good defensive stops by the Rams. And a foul underneath on VCU. Jason Nelson, his first foul on Nelson, his first. Right here, this is just petty larceny, the theft from behind. Davon Smith just playing some heads up basketball. But you, not Jackson's fault, right? No, Someone's got to yell, no. hey, man, look out. They got to yell out the screens. They got to yell out defenders. Basketball is communication. You walk into any college coach's practice, they are screaming that at the top of their lungs. Communicate on ball screens, all situations. And sometimes it's difficult to do, but you got to try. Davon Smith already has six rebounds and five assists. Remember, he's coming off a triple-double against Iowa, where he had 10 assists and 10 rebounds. Kata blocked underneath. The freshman Bell got it. That's the third or fourth opportunity Kata's had in the paint, and he hasn't been able to convert. Bearstow high off the glass, and Craig Smith wants timeout. And Craig Smith just got teed up. So Craig Smith just got a quick tee arguing that call. He said, how do you call one on one end and not on the other? When we come back, Bearstow will be at the free throw line, and Craig Smith will try to cool down. 23-19, Utah. Up and Bearstow will go to the free throw line and try to convert a three point play. But this is what Coach Smith was upset about, Corey. 
Well, there's nothing to be upset about. KBK just got to dunk that, plain and simple. He's going up. That's the third or fourth opportunity he's had around the rim where he hasn't gathered the ball and gone up strong. He's one of the strongest players in the Pac-12 conference. I understand what it looked like, but you can look at the replay and see they got all ball. He just lost it. And at the other end, that was a nice play, easy layup. So KBK has got to get it together and attack the rim the way he has all season. Zeb Jackson will shoot the technical foul on Craig Smith. So he will shoot two. Maybe the wing hurt him there. Possibly. Second one good. And it will be Utah ball. So no foul was called on the high arching layup by Bearstow. Craig Smith just didn't like what happened on the previous possession. So 23-20, it's now a single possession game and Utah ball as we close in under six minutes. This is the closest VCU has been the entire game. Carlson no good, Nelson with the rebound. Davon Smith looks like a double-double could be in his future again tonight. And he's already turned in a good game for most college coaches. They'll take that from their guys night in and night out. Bearstow for three, off the mark. If VCU can continue to slow the Utes down and make them think, that's the kind of game they want to play. Davon Smith in traffic, no good. Kebakeda had it knocked from behind. And the ball went out. Roosevelt Wheeler, who has checked in, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. The look for the lob for Carlson. Smith didn't have him, and now he's got to throw it way over the top, and it's a five-second count turnover by Utah. And that pass was going to get intercepted anyway, so maybe that was the best thing that could happen right there for Utah, but you sense the momentum change in this game, and if you're VCU and you're down 10 or 12, you're worried about your offense. Now that it's a one-possession game, they only have to worry about defense. Max Shulga is their leading scorer. 15 a game has yet to really get going in this game. No points, 0 for 3 from the field, and an offensive foul on VCU. His first 15 foul for the Rams. Right there, he got a little excited, tried to walk the guard down and bury him under the screen to create some space for a shooter, but you can't set those moving screens. Madsen off the curl. Brandon Carlson left all alone, and he buries another three. Somebody wasn't paying attention in the film session. You do not help off Brandon Carlson. Carlson leads the Utes with 11. Nelson. And an offensive foul again on VCU. And Ryan Odom's like, what? I don't know about those back-to-back -back offensive fouls. That's the second same error in a row by Wheeler. He's trying to walk the guards down once he makes contact. You got to hold your position, let them bump into you. But Wheeler, a little too aggressive trying to pin the guards. And those are moving screens. Next foul, both teams will be shooting one-on-one. -on -one. Madsen off the curl for three. He's got 100 on the season, the new record, and a chance for a four-point play. Gabe Madsen gets the Huntsman Center crowd going. Well, you knew it was only a matter of time before they ran a pin down for Madsen, and when they call his number, he delivers. Kevin and Coach, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's apropos 
Corey, that Gabe Madsen's historic three was the curl you've talked about, fading away monster, 100 on the season and a new record. Dave, it's a pin down, but this shouldn't have counted. There you see the leg kick into the defender. They should have waved that off. Offensive foul. The refs missed that call. Definitely not a natural basketball shooting motion. And you can see the VCU bench was, in, was furious that he received an and one on that particular call. 29-20. Utah. Now Shoga waits and gets the screen from Furman. Shoga still looking for his first points. Bairstow with five on the clock. The high floater, no good. Furman tips it. Furman tips it again. Second one's good. Nice offensive glass work by Christian Furman. And another sloppy play here by Utah. It's the second time they've tried to make a little backdoor play. And Shulga got fouled. Probably should have converted that one, but either way, Shulga will go to the free throw line and shoot two. And Max is an 88% free throw shooter. Leads the team in scoring 14.3 points per game, but so far he's struggled, Corey. 0 for 3 from the field. He's a player that gets his shots in the offensive flow, but right now, VCU's action isn't creating any mismatches or downhill opportunities. So if he's going to score, he has to go one on one. Fats Billups comes back in for Ryan Odom. The freshman Bell sits down. Shogo will have one more. Second one's good. Shogo has a seat and Zeb Jackson back in. 29 22, 309 left, first half. Dave, you kind of get the feeling for VCU. The, the theme and the motto is hang around. Play defense and hang around. Don't let this thing get away from you. Every time the Utes have made a run, they've answered. Smith high in the air, but missed everything on the floater. Jackson, great pass to Furman, who got it knocked away. you got to convert those. Beautiful pass from Jackson. Madsen spinning inside, kicks it out to Ben Carlson. Badzema inside. Tough shot over Furman. We talked about this earlier. If you want Cole Bajima to turn down the three-point shot, you got to live with the fact that he can hit the floater as well. Bamasil had it knocked away. Runs it back down. Phillips in the corner, and Fats Phillips knocks down a three. They are very tough, hanging around, getting the offense they need. You're right, they're not going away. Well, their, their transition offense is what's been keeping them in the game. Their half-court offense is a little sus right now, but when they get those turnovers and those downhill plays, guys are knocking down shots. Smith into Lovering, three on the shot clock. Badgham is going to have to shoot it. He does. Bearstow clears it. Bamasil from the corner, no good. Still only a five-point game, Corey. That last shot a little quick, I think, for the Rams. But right now they feel like they've got the defensive squad out there that can guard everybody one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody needs a double team. They've been getting stops. Ben Carlson left open in the corner. No good, and Jackson gets it. Carlson, Carlson one of those guys for Utah that can definitely knock down threes. Jackson missed it. Lovering gets it. Smith running downhill. Stops, waits, lets everyone fly by, and Davon Smith lays it in. Smith finally delivering a little bit of offense. They've been somewhat cold since Carlson went to the bench. Zeb Jackson for three. 
20 seconds left. The Utes will have the final shot. DCU would love to go in with a stop right here. Five seconds now. Smith's got to go. He does. Lost the ball. Got it back. The three's good. Davon Smith. That'll make Craig Smith feel a little better at halftime. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Davon Smith with the step back loses it, but then gathers it and knocks it down. He right. lost the ball, Corey. I didn't think he'd get it off. Great defense. They stay with Madsen, but right there, he gets it on his hip. And in true gunslinger fashion, from the hip, right off the head, nothing but net. 33, uh, 36, 26. The Utes are on top. We'll send it to the studio. Kevin Connors and the coach, Seth Greenberg. Kevin, we got a good one here. NIT quarterfinal here on ESPN, 36-26. The number two seed Utah Utes over VCU. We are at halftime. Dave Feldman and former standout Corey Williams from Arizona. This is the up-to-date bracket. Seton Hall and Georgia already in the semifinals at Hinkle on Tuesday. Indiana State awaits the winner of our game, Corey. Well, here's the deal. 18-2 is how the Utes started this game. VCU has crawled back, and you said not shooting well, and hung in there and played pretty good. But Brandon Carlson has had an answer. He always does. When you talk about elite players, that's what it means. When the ops know what you're going to do, but you get it done anyway. Brandon Carlson, sensational in the first round, taking whatever the defense gives him. Davon Smith converting in transition, making plays with his athleticism and his quickness, doing what they do. And in the first half, for VCU, taking that three to go in at half, that was huge. But for VCU, the transition three has been their friend. Only 26 points in the first half, not a huge offensive output, but it's been the three ball that's allowed them to hang around if they want to pick it up on the defensive end and continue to shoot it well from beyond the arc. VCU shooting 31% from the field, only 27% from three, three of 11. Meanwhile, the Utah Utes are shooting 42%. And they're 7 of 16 from 3, 43%. So still shooting pretty well from 3, even though the Rams hang their hat on 3-point defense. VCU had a chance right before half to cut this to a 4- or 5-point game. They came up empty-handed. Utah delivered a 3. Now with a 10-point advantage, but a great start to the second half right there. Now cut to 8 with Bearstow with a quick hoop. Seb Jackson and Fat Phillips leading the way for VCU and Madsen and Brandon Carlson for the Utes. Lovering on the pass from Brandon Carlson. The swing to Bajima. Bajima with the left floater, no good. Here comes Kwani Kwani. Shulga in the corner. Davon Smith waits for help. Nice defense by Zeb Jackson cutting off the baseline. Smith, nice cut inside. Now waits. Mismatch inside. Carlson double team. Smith left alone. Davon Smith for three. One of the best passing big men in the country, Brandon Carlson, recognizing the double team. Smith staying home, knocking down the three. A blocking foul called on Davon Smith. And Craig Smith said, how do you not call that push with the offhand? Craig Smith's got to be careful. He's already got one tee. He's got a technical, but he's also got a point. But it's all about timing. The blocking foul takes place first. Then the shoulder extension throwing him to the ground. So there was definitely some excessive force from Jackson. But it took place after the quick little blocking foul. Davon Smith already with 10, 7, and 5, and the two blocks and steals. So has 12 double-doubles this season and four triple-doubles as the foul is picked up by Kwani Kwani of VCU.
Now Madsen goes into Carlson. Double teamed. All the way across court to Bajima. He's off, but Carlson with the offensive glass tries to dunk it, misses. I don't know if he knew how far away from the hoop he was, Court. Hey, I love it, though. Go up strong in the crowd. Put the officials in a position where they got to make a call. Attack the rim. Kwani Kwani with the runner off the glass. No, Bajima clears it. Smith almost lost it, and then Zeb Jackson fouled it and trying to get the ball. Zeb Jackson, his first, second team foul for the Rams. Hey, a reminder, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Madsen off the curl. The three is good by Gabe Madsen, who now has 101 on the season. You've got to stay in his footsteps defensively. He only needs a little bit of daylight to get off that jump shot. Madsen 4-5 from beyond the arc today. Bairstow split the defenders. Short-armed it. Davon Smith all the way. That would have counted anyway because VCU grabbed the rim. 44-28. Sorry, the, Cor. No, these are these pressure points we talked about. A couple of missed baskets followed by some makes for Utah, and they're trying to stretch this lead out. Shulga for three. Continues to struggle offensively. Smith, bad pass, Zeb Jackson, better steal, here comes Jackson, he misses it. And the Utes have five on three. Madsen left alone, Gabe Madsen again, another three. 47-28. Kwani Kwani tried to dunk over everybody, and the foul is going to be on Lawson Lovering. And this media timeout could not come soon enough for the VCU Rams. Gabe Madsen has put on a one-man wrecking show. He's five of six from beyond the arc. He's coming off a game where he had seven threes and a career-high 31. And that game was on Sunday. And it appears a couple days later, he has not cooled off. 47-28, the Utes on top. Women's Sweet 16 matchups for Friday on ESPN in the app. Oregon State and Notre Dame tip off the day at 2.30 Eastern. Then Indiana takes on the number one seed undefeated South Carolina, followed by NC State squaring off against Cameron Brink and Stanford. That's at 7.30. And the night's capped off by Gonzaga and Texas. A 19-point lead here for the number two seed Utah Utes, thanks to 55, Corey. He is a defensive player's nightmare. When you talk about chasing him around the court, making sure he doesn't get a look, that's almost impossible. Whether it's dribble handoffs, transition, stagger screens, you have to be in his jersey. He is too good, and tonight, the beat goes on. Dialing up from distance, sometimes he's got a hand in his face, other times they lose him in traffic, but the result is the same. He is a walking bucket. Gabe Madsen absolutely torching the Rams here tonight. Seven threes versus Iowa in the second round. Five threes tonight in the quarterfinals. And getting help from the big man, Brandon Carlson. Kwani Kwani's first shot is good, and he is a much improved shooter. Had a nice career for the California Golden Bears and found a home in Richmond, Virginia with Ryan Odom. Well, Dave, for the Rams, the calculation is they're go Utah will shoot worse from the perimeter than Brandon Carlson will from the post. But that's not proving to be true. <laughs> the math isn't mathing. He's kicking it out. These guys are knocking it down at a higher percentage than he would on jump hooks. 
Now Smith against the freshman Bell. Ball gets knocked out of bounds off of Smith. And if there's any critique of Smith, and there's not much, Corey, at all, is that sometimes his motor is so fast that he can turn the ball over. Yeah, he needs to work on his handle, to be quite honest. He's a great player, but he has that high dribble, and a lot of times he gets in traffic. So just getting that handle under control, you combine that with his court sense and his athleticism, he's a great point guard, no question about it. Bell thought about it. Didn't want to take the wide open shot. Now they need to get a shot off. There's four left. Jackson's got to shoot the three, and it's way off the mark. Give Lovering and Carlson a lot of credit for Utah. They're switching on to smaller players, and they're able to contain without committing fouls. Makes that Utah defense much more difficult to score on. VCU 0 for their last seven field goal attempts. Madsen, lovering inside, couldn't handle the pass, but Bamasil called for grabbing him and a foul on Joe Bamasil. And Lovering said, throw it up, but don't throw it down. Throw it, lob that thing up. I'll go get it. Foul number eight, Michael Bell, his first 13 foul for the Reds. So the Upes keep it up by 17. Madsen for three. You're sh shaking your head, Corey. You didn't like the selection, or you were amazed at the distance? Didn't think that was the best look, but when you've made the shots that he makes, he clearly has the green light from his coach and his teammates to shoot those shots. Even though they can get better looks than that, everyone's okay on the Utes with him shooting that. Now Nelson. Phillips off the mark. Bajima comes down with it. Madsen is fouled. And so Gabe Madsen, let's see if they call that on the floor. I believe they do. So Utah will take it out underneath. And the lob, Carlson! They run that play a lot, and I don't know why they wouldn't. Got to get better pressure on that inbounds passer. Better communication. We talked about that at the beginning of the game. Calling out screens, letting your teammates know. No excuse for Brandon Carlson being that open on a baseline out of bounds. Bell got away with a push-off. Here comes Davon Smith. Badgemo in the corner. He's off. Carlson flying no good. VCU's got the board. Nelson with the runner. And he gets it to go. So Jason Nelson, the sophomore from Richmond, ends the VCU drought 49-32. Now Smith and Lovering, the two-man game. Smith keeps it. Madsen off the mark. Bamasil pushing it for VCU. Bamasil splits the defenders. Now Bell pulls it out. We'll have a TV timeout at the next whistle. He's stripped by Bajima. Bajima, lovering inside. No good, and a foul called underneath on the freshman Bell. So we will take a break. It's 49-32. Utah on top. If you're going to run an inbounds play, this is a good one. Set a screen and throw it up high, and the big man will do the rest. The Utes cruising right now in the second half. with Angel Reese and LSU taking on UCLA at 1 Eastern. 
followed by Caitlin Clark in Iowa against Colorado. Then over on ESPN, Baylor takes on freshman phenom Juju Watkins in USC. And we cap the day off with Paige Beckers in UConn facing Duke. All four games available on the ESPN app. 49-32 Utah on that inbounds play, Corey. Why was it so easy? Well, it's so easy because it's outstanding design. If you look under the basket, Gabe Madsen is your second screener. He's your shooter. And right there, that's Billups the third decides he's not going to give up the shooter and this is just bad communication you got to give up the shooter you can't let a seven footer get a run at the rim but that's a great play design by Utah having your shooter be the screener knowing guys aren't going to switch off of him we've seen it on all three games we've done Utah's run it and successfully in each one in a situation like that you, you play inside out you protect the hoop and if you give up a three that's fine but you can't give up an alley-oop dunk. Lawson Lovering, one for two from the free throw line today, misses the second. Seven feet or taller. Look at, look at, this is a lot of height. Carlson, one of the seven-footers that can really shoot, which is why you think he's got a good career at the next level. And see, that's just showing points per game. It doesn't even show you how many shots they alter, how many times guys penetrate and kick it back out because the seven-footers in there. Their impact on the game is way more than just points. Bama seal, baseline. Nelson thought about it, gathered it, and then lost it. And you do agree with that, Corey, about Brandon playing at the next level, right? As good a shooter as he is? Oh, absolutely. I think there are a lot of teams that will be able to put him in situations with his height and his ability to shoot. Be a great player in the NBA. Stretch four, great shot blocker. Got to get in the weight room a little bit, though. Hunter Erickson misses, and a foul on Furman, and they're going to say he pushed Kata Kaba underneath the basket. And this is the impact Kaba Kata can have pursuing the offensive glass right there, just being active. The Utes are going to get a second possession here. See if they run that lob play. Right now, it looks like Vajima is getting set up on the weak side. They faked it, and then Carlson comes out and gets the wide open three because they were afraid of the lob. It really is pick your poison. And there you see the high basketball IQ. Brandon Carlson running circles around the defender. Bama Seal counters a much needed hoop for the Rams. Brandon Carlson has 15 points. He's made six of nine from the field, including three of four from three. And Dave, he's barely breaking a sweat. He's not doing a whole lot of dribbling. He's not going one-on-one. -on -one. He's just playing within the system, but he's playing smart. He knows the double team is coming, gives and it up. beautiful pass to Kaba Kato who got fouled. We're talking about low-energy basketball right there. Just use your head, let your teammates do the work. Double team came right away, Corey, and he witnessed it instantly. When you have a superstar player who loves to play the game the right way, basketball is fun. Everybody eats on this Utah team because of that unselfish play and that court vision. A very well-coached team. Kate had four points in the first round against UCI, four versus Iowa. Four rebounds in the last game. And those are his first points tonight. Second one's good. Phillips tried to get it to Barristow. Ball got knocked out of bounds. There's plenty of time left, Corey, but there needs to be a sense of, of urgency right here with what BCU is doing. Well, it's got to be a combination of things. they got to put a lid on the basket defensively, and then the shots have got to start to fall. They can't play late into the possession and take poor shots, and that's kind of the way they came out here in the first part of the second half. Cole Batima with a three for Utah, extending the lead. 57-35.
And this is where Utah is dangerous. When they have a double-digit lead, all of a sudden you've got the comfort to shoot those quick threes because there's not a lot of pressure on you. Bajima has seven. Zeb Jackson off the dribble. And VCU just can't get any shots to fall. That's just what's happening. Beautiful pass to Kaver Kaver. Davon Smith found him in stride. And Dave, that's just off a missed shot. That's just a, a straight up defensive stop and the youth's beating them down the floor. Timeout VCU, 59-35. We know Davon Smith can jump. We know he can rebound. We know he can pass. And this one was pretty good. Kaba Keda, the recipient. The Utes are rolling. Fifty-nine, thirty-five, ten, twenty-three left in the second half. Five degrees of Logan, Utah. Both these guys coached at Utah State. Ryan Odom and Craig Smith. Craig Smith was there three seasons. Ryan Odom followed him there, and then was there for two seasons, and then went to Richmond. Both had very much success. In fact, Craig Smith, in his three years at Utah State, won twenty-eight games, twenty-six games, and twenty games. So and both have very fond memories of their time in Logan. We love to see the resurgence of basketball in the state of Utah. You come to Utah, it doesn't matter if you're playing the Utes, Utah State, BYU, you're probably playing a tournament team, and you better bring your lunch. Davon Smith with the steal. Smith inside, waits for the traffic, leads it to Kaba, and Kaba Kaba flushes it. Another assist for Smith. Jackson, nice pass to Furman, who got fouled. And maybe they need to get the ball in Jackson's hands more often. But I'll tell you, when the ball's in Davon Smith's hands, Corey, good things are happening for Utah. Well, we know about his athleticism, but this is just pure creativity. Just shakes you out of your shoes and socks. Hits the big fella who puts you on a poster. That's just great basketball. Kata got away with a little shuffle. First free throw is off to the surprise of no one. Corey, Davon Smith already has a double-double, 12 points and 11 assists. He needs one rebound for another triple-double. And it's fifth of the season. And the crazy thing is every fan in here already knows that, and they'll be cheering for his <laughs> like, rebound. Like they were, yeah. They can look up there and see Smith and see 12 points, nine rebounds, 11 assists. Remember the big ovation he got when he got it against Iowa. It was a late rebound. But what I like about his game is on the defensive end, when that shot goes up, he steps into the action. He goes and helps his teammates rebound. Smith just having an excellent all-around game. 63-36. Bairstow spinning and hitting the shot. They 13 minutes into the second half. VCU with just 12 points in the half. You, you knew this wasn't a team that scored in the bunches, but you just wondered, could they play defense well enough to stay with Utah? And right now, the Utes are getting everything they want, getting downhill. They became again the beautiful pass by... Hunter Erickson and the awareness. Just not the defensive effort rotations necessary when you're playing against a high-powered team that's in rhythm. Bell, the freshman, no good. Furman, nice offensive rebound. And he is fouled by Kaba Kaba. Davon Smith upset because he felt like he was going to miss the layup and he got his, <laughs> his triple-double. 
right here. If you're not going to stop the ball coming down the lane, you at least got to rotate over. Kay Bakeda with a couple of nice jams here in the second half. This is a guy who's clearly built for the NBA, but brings a huge defensive dimension to Utah. And when he gets buckets, that's just more ammunition for the Utes. Gabe Matson back in. Where has this guy been? <laughs> like, like you need him now. <laughs> if you're BCU, you're looking like, so really? you're coming back with Madsen now. I mean, this is one of those easy games where you just guard everybody. That's the defensive strategy. Everybody on Utah needs to be respected, so just lock in and play solid D. But they've got to stop these actions, the dribble handoffs, the ball screens, turning the corner. It's all bad news for the Rams. Out of bounds, and the ball will stay with Utah. We'll take a commercial break. The Utes are rolling. They're up 25 points and have their eyes on a date in Indianapolis. 65-40, number two Utah on top of VCU. Kabakeda enjoying this postseason run. All right, let's go back to 1983, Corey. A guy you know, Jason Kidd, you played against him. California Golden Bears. In that season, he had four triple doubles. Only one other player in the Pac-12 history has four triple doubles in the same season. And we're watching him tonight. That's Davon Smith. And oh, by the way, he is one rebound away from a fifth triple-double, which would pass the great Jason Kidd. You're looking at some elite company when you talk about Jason Kidd. Had the opportunity to play against him when I was at Arizona. A phenomenal guard, an NBA legend. But if you look at the numbers, they do not lie. Davon Smith on pace to pass up one of the collegiate and NBA greats in terms of triple-doubles. And he's got nearly eight minutes to collect one rebound to step into history. Did you ever have to guard Jason Kidd? Yes. How did that go? Very well. For who? For me. Oh, did well. okay. Did okay. Well. I, I meant no disrespect. I no, just no, no. was we, wondering who it went well for. We had an entire scheme defensively at Arizona to stop Jason Kidd. Coach Olsen had us pre prepping for weeks, but those Cal teams were really good. So is Gabe Madsen, who now has a sixth three-pointer. Six of nine from distance for Gabe, and he has 18 points. Twenty eight point lead for the Utes. Bell is way off. And right now, VCU just out of rhythm. Zeb Jackson is the playmaker for them. He really has to take control of the point guard position and begin to get this offense. Uh, back on track because right now guys are just out there trying to make something happen and the Utes are going to keep pouring it on offensively. And a foul. And foul to number 13, Kwani Kwani. His second. So the foul on Kwani Kwani. You know what's not lost, Corey, is what a year Ryan Odom has done with this VCU Rams team in his very first season yeah I mean, he, they've won 24 games they lost in the a10 championship to duquesne we talked to him today he's a positive kid and kid he's in his 40s a positive young man his father of course was a legend at wake forest um and i think vcu is very lucky to have ryan odom and i think they're going to do very good things they're just this is a tough place to play and offensively they're having a very poor night yeah, very few coaches over deliver in that first year. And he certainly has over delivered in terms of expectations. When you look at the amount of wins they've had tonight, obviously, offense not clicking the way it traditionally does, but a very bright future at VCU. Shulga hangs inside and another turnover. Hunter Erickson. And he hits a three, and Utah cannot miss. You know, I was here several weeks ago, that epic game where the Utes hung 50 
on UCLA, and they had the party flowing just like that. Quick transition threes, trying to knock you out. Barristow can't get it to go, and the crowd realizes what everyone now knows. Davon Smith has another triple-double. And that'll make Craig Smith crazy, just a sloppy turnover. And Shulga makes him pay. Max Shulga for three. It's one of the great college basketball atmospheres. When you see how connected the fan base is, how knowledgeable they are of the game, coming out here on a Wednesday night for the NIT showdown. And everybody's following their stats. They know exactly how much their guy has. Carlson no good. Smith tried to run it down, and they will keep it. Utah does. So another triple-double. Five on the season, Corey. The most ever by a Pac-12 player. What else can you say about this young man? You see what he brings to the table. He's seen all kinds of gimmick defenses, zones, traps, boxing ones, but every night he comes out and produces for the Utes. Shot clock reset for five seconds. Five will be on the shot clock for Utah on the inbounds. Madsen. Space, no good. Davon Smith out hustles everybody for the rebound. And that time, BCU defended the lob and the three very well. Smith inside. Lovering couldn't handle it. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll go to VCU. Bears throw out to Kwani Kwani for three. And he can't get it, but Shulga in the right place at the right time. That presence of Carlson just keeps you from doing anything and a nice drive Charles by Bearstow. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier with seven footers. When you penetrate and have to kick it back out or decide not to shoot, that just makes the defense much more difficult to score against. And both Lovering and Carlson do a great job of rotating over and then forcing the ball back out. Bearstow quietly would tend to lead the Rams and Shulga just ran into Brandon Carlson Carlson's called for the foul and Shulga got an elbow right to the head good call by the officials they were whistling that earlier against VCU the moving screens on the big men will not be tolerated seen a lot of those calls this year in college basketball Now an offensive foul, and it's called on Toby Lawal. So we will take a break. The Utes are cruising. Under four minutes to go. They lead 71-47. game is on the network of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Coy Davon Smith, the story, once again, as he has been the entire postseason. Well, you talk about his motor, his willingness to just get in there and mix it up. He doesn't accept anything. Defenses, he doesn't give up shots. He doesn't give up easy drives for ball handlers. He goes until you shut him off, if you can shut him off. That's what makes him a great player. This three right before the half just kind of got the party started. And in the second half, he's just been on cruise control, making play after play a very special player indeed. 71-47. He took over for Raleigh Wooster. And David has just been incredible. Started the last 18 games. Remember, Wooster went out with a lower injury, and he was the glue of this team. And, and take nothing away from what Raleigh Wooster, you see right there, brought to this team. Um, 
Davon Smith is not Wooster. He's different, and it's been a dynamic, and Davon Smith has done a fantastic job. He's that rare combination of gifts and talent combined with heart. I mean, you can be gifted and you can be talented, but what are you going to do with it? He does everything. He rebounds, he defends, he shoots threes, he gets dunks, he gets blocks. Like, he goes and plays this game at 100%. Brandon Carlson for three, off the mark. Shulga up ahead to Bearstow. Bearstow fouled, count it, and Bearstow will have a chance for a three-point play. Foul number two, Cole Benjamin, his first 16 hunt for the Utes. So, Corey, interesting thing about Bearstow, he played for Greg Smith at Utah State. He's from Australia, and Craig Smith went all the way to Australia to visit him. And when he gets off the long plane ride, uh, they go in for dinner, and Penny Barristow is sure serving salmon. And Craig Smith can't stand salmon. He never liked it. Doesn't want it. But he's traveled all the way over. He's trying to recruit this kid. So says, I'm going to try to eat this salmon, and, you know, whatever. I'll get through it. Turns out he loved Penny Barristow's salmon, and now he loves salmon. So it changed his whole output on salmon. Thanks to Penny Barristow. And he got the commitment from the recruit. Yeah, so it worked. You don't see the coincidence there. I do. If he had spit <laughs> out the if he had spit out the salmon, Bear still was not going to Utah State. I agree. So final two forty five of this. Quarterfinal NIT. It looks like the Utah Utes will be going on to Indianapolis. Remember, they haven't been in the NIT uh, in six years. And the last time they were, they made it all the way to the championship game and they lost. They're going to have a chance to redeem themselves. And Dave, I'll tell you something. This Utah squad is an NCAA tournament team. They just didn't do the work they needed to do. They had a number of close losses couple of bad losses in conference play that kind of took them out of contention but I think to be honest at the start of this season everybody felt like this was a team that was going to be at the top of the Pac-12 competing for the Pac-12 title and that just goes to show you how competitive that league is getting four teams in beautiful spin by Carlson well you and I talked about it Cole they lost their last two games at the Oregon schools and yeah. that kind of kept them out of the NCAA tournament that, those were death blows in, top, in, top, in terms of the selection committee but right now they're still playing some great basketball. They've strung together what's going to be three wins here in the NIT, and that's what it's about. You play until you can't play anymore, and Utah be moving on to Indianapolis with a team that's uh, very balanced, very talented, playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and they were so good here, Corey. Why were they so good at home? 16-2, and two, about to be 17-2. and two. They were only 2-9 and nine on the road. Can if you I, explain that? If I could tell you that, I'd be over there in the, on the Utah <laughs> staff or the polo on coaching. No, but, you know, psychologically, obviously, home court advantage is a real thing in college basketball. Um, the struggles on the road, they're not the only team that struggled on the road in conference play across the country. I think you saw that trend, but some of it's inexplicable. The Utes have a great offense here in this building, and in the games that they lost, it's just like they didn't take their jumpers with them. So... Brandon Carlson comes out with a nice ovation. And Utah is going to move on and play Indiana State, the number one seed. Last time the home crowd will see Brandon Carlson. And now both teams are going to empty their benches. Gabe Madsen's going to get a nice hand. Leaves with six threes. Once again, Gabe Madsen supplies the haymakers to crack this game wide open. Talked about his shooting in the open, his ability to score those big buckets. Hunter Erickson was waiting to check in for Davon Smith, who would have gotten a nice hand, but he missed the free throw. You still get it on the next dead ball. Ah. 
And now Davon Smith will leave the game. 15 points. 11 rebounds. 12 assists. And four triple doubles. A well-deserved standing ovation for a young man who has played his best basketball in the biggest moments. Toby Lawal with the nice rejection. And now the final minute. And a timeout for substitutions. Kaba Kata comes out. Brandon Haddock comes in. Nice opportunity here for the fans at Huntsman to acknowledge their team, Corey. Yeah, last home game of this season. Some big moments here in this gym, some big wins. And now just to show their appreciation to some guys who gave it everything they had. And Dave, for this VCU club, you know, they fought and got a tough road win at South Florida. And they were going to have to play that similar kind of game here defensively, and they just couldn't slow Utah down, and that was the difference. They're going to be back, and Ryan Odom is a very good coach. They're going to be good. They're very young. Some of their guys have only played basketball for five or six years, Corey. We talked about Toby Lawal just, just getting better, guys who hadn't grown up playing basketball. Kwani Kwani didn't grow up playing basketball. A lot of these guys didn't. Michael Bell in England didn't grow up playing basketball. And this is what you want for that type of situation. Get more games, more reps, more experience. You play in the NIT, you develop your players, get them some real on-the-job training, so to speak, and you run, you run it back next year. Have you seen anyone else in the NIT where you said Utah cannot beat that team? I don't think so. No, I think when the brackets came out, I think there's probably half a dozen teams that had a legit shot at winning it all, Utah being one of them. So I'm looking forward to some really great games in Indianapolis because uh, I won't say it's a coin toss, but it's hard to call. But there's some solid squads moving ahead. Indiana State is the number one seed, so that's how who they'll have to face on Tuesday in Indianapolis. The lob. And we talked about the 50-inch vertical, and they're going to check the clock. But I will say this. I know it wasn't a fun night for VCU. It is fun to watch the wall jump. Boy, that's just filthy. I mean, he makes it look so easy. Talked about a guy, just throw it up towards the rim, and he'll make it happen. Craig Smith just... Let out a huge, oh, as he knows, he's moving on. Final seconds, and the Utah Utes are going to Indianapolis. A great offensive display by Utah, inside, outside. Multiple players in double figures. It's what every coach wants. Playing your best basketball in March. The Utes are going to advance. And so now they move on to play the number one seed, Indiana State. So when they started this, they said, Corey, why don't we go back to the final? We did it six years ago, and they will play at 7 Eastern on Tuesday against Indiana State, Georgia and Seton Hall on Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern. Why not win it all? They still could. Utah's got all the weapons they need to play a complete game against anybody in the country. They got to make sure they bring their game to Indianapolis. Gabe Madsen had six threes, and Davon Smith had a triple-double for the fourth time. For Corey Williams and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave Feldman. Utah wins it 74-54. SportsCenter is next.